this deal gets ugly next decade. Some of it by year 11, some of it by year 12, some of it by year 15. What are the three ugliest things I can say about any, in any non-proliferation contest? Because I've been involved in non-proliferation for a long time. Iran is going to be allowed in year 15 to have an unlimited number of centrifuges with no limit as to their quality. They are allowed to have a heavy water reactor and reprocessing facilities. Any one of those that I mentioned is just is 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 uh, beyond the pale for any uh, proliferation concern. Once Iran is at that stage, preventing breakout or sneak out will be almost impossible. Breakout is when you send the inspectors home, and everybody knows you've sent the inspectors home, and you race toward a bomb. Sneak out is you keep the inspectors there, and you go around them, and you get a bomb. When Iran has a uh, number and quality of centrifuges so that they can produce enough fissile material for a nuclear weapon in one or two days, do you really think that they are not a threshold nuclear state? So it's good, bad, and ugly. What do we do about it? I get all these questions. Sherman, do you think it's a good deal? Like I'm some uh, presidential historian uh, or pundit. It is not my job to grade the president. We've got some journalists here. You're welcome to it. We've got some voters here. You're welcome to it. Then I get these articles from foreign policy scholars that say, what should America do now? As if they or I will suddenly become the czar of all American foreign policy? These are interesting questions, and you can write columns about them if you want. But the issue before me is what does one congressman do in this circumstance? A good, bad, and ugly deal. And now what's the political circumstance? The president loves the deal. He will spend an hour with him, one-on-one -on -one in the Oval Office. And I will report to you right now he doesn't think this is an okay deal. He thinks this is a spectacular deal for America. He thinks it's a spectacular deal for Israel. He may be wrong. That's what he believes, and he will be doing everything possible to defend this deal. Second, what's the situation in Congress? Congress, um, between 55 and 60 percent of Congress is going to vote against the deal. But that doesn't override a veto, because what is I was the first Democrat to come out and say I would not support the deal. But it, I was like the 12th Democrat to endorse what has become the strategy for dealing with the deal. And I'll explain that strategy, and you'll see why I might be a little reluctant to go along with it. The strategy is we're going to go with a resolution of disapproval, which has statutory implications, which look like they would deprive the Iranians of what they've been promised in Vienna. But when you look carefully, deprives them of maybe 5 or 10% of what they were promised in Vienna. OK, we will we, we'll certainly pass that resolution in the House, and I will vote for it. It'll go to the Senate. It will probably get the 60 votes out of 100 that it needs to pass the Senate. It'll go to the President's desk. It will be vetoed instantaneously. It will go back. It, will, it takes a two-thirds vote of the House and the Senate to override. It will not get two-thirds in the Senate. It will not get two-thirds in the House. And the last picture, and this is why I don't like this particular strategy, because this is how it ends. The last picture is a picture of the proponents of the deal opening a bottle of champagne in the Oval Office with the headline being, um, Iran deal wins critical victory in Congress. Now, why do I hate that picture? Why do I hate that headline? <coughs> it's not because I don't want to be on the winning side, the losing side. I'm a Democrat. I'm for the almost entirely in the minority. I'm always on the losing side. Thank you. Um, I hate that because my number one goal is to make you and everyone in the world say this isn't a treaty. This isn't a binding agreement. This isn't a legislative agreement. This is something future presidents can demand be reopened. But instead, that picture and the confusion uh, will be, well, president signed it. It went to Congress. It seemed to have won some big victory in Congress. 
The president celebrated the big victory in Congress. So you got a deal that's signed by the president, wins a big victory in Congress, looks, sure looks like a treaty to me, unless you actually bother to read Article 3 of the Constitution. Article 2, excuse me. So um, that's the picture I don't want to see. Now, I can add one vote in favor of a resolution of disapproval, try to underline the fact that, the United, that Congress does not endorse this deal. And I, it's not like my face or vote get into that picture. I'm a footnote maybe at the bottom of the article that nobody gets to. Um, there's a, the other way to go also has some disadvantages, and that would be to adopt a, resol a resolution that is, does not affect our sanction statutes but doesn't go to the president. So the House passes it and says, we think this is a bad deal, and we don't feel bound by it. Future presidents shouldn't feel bound by it. Senate passes the same thing. We pass it. We have the celebratory picture. The message goes out to the world. Um, that, may, that is a plan B strategy. I do not think it will be adopted because the people who are opposed to this deal are very anxious to actually poke even a small hole in it. I don't think a small hole is going to be poked in it. And if the hole is poked, I don't think it's a very big hole. Because even if Congress were to override, the Iranians get almost everything that they want. What they want is relief from European and Asian sanctions, and that is on the way just as soon as Iran gets to implementation day of this agreement, which, thank God, requires them to do the two good things that I identified as good earlier in this presentation. Um, so. Where do we go uh, from here? First, we do everything to say that we are not morally bound by this agreement. Now, I'm not, I don't think you sound reasonable, or it may not be the most reasonable thing to take a copy of the agreement and put it in a wood chipper as if you're a Republican making a, a TV commercial about Obamacare. But we don't have to say that we want to shred the agreement. We can say we want to extend the agreement. Under this agreement, the sanctions relief is permanent. So why not the limitation on centrifuges? We're not in a position to demand that now, but we are in a position to reopen with a future administration. One obstacle, a belief that we are contractually bound and morally bound to stick with this agreement as written. The solution is to make sure people know that isn't the case. Um, second, as we've all mentioned, uh, Iran's human rights, its record on hostages, four American hostages, the thousands of deaths for which they bear moral responsibility in Syria, the support for terrorism around the world. If Iran had never seen a centrifuge, we'd want to sanction all that. And I'll be introducing legislation, I'll wait till October, to impose sanctions which are not just phony attempts to reimpose the same sanctions for the same nuclear reasons, but rather are keyed in a reasonable way to force Iran to change its behavior in, the, in those non-nuclear areas. Uh, and another area we have to press on is for Israel to get the qualitative military edge that it needs knowing uh, the situation that it faces uh, and embolden Iran a richer Iran, Iran that is free to buy offensive conventional weapons five years from now, these are reasons enough for the United States to do what has traditionally been the single cheapest thing you could do for American security, which is give money to Israel. So um, uh, I, we've got to be fighting for all of those things. And uh, I've gone way uh, over time, and uh, I hope that you'll ask me about the North Korea connection because there's one aspect of this deal that isn't in anything anybody in here has ever read. And uh, people here have read an awful lot, but, uh, but that's the one thing that isn't there. Uh, why don't I open up, open up for questions? what about Pyongyang? What about the North Korea deal? <laughs>